I want to try to mess up your brain with this one. Oh boy. I'm just going to read it straight through. <sighs> it's not even long. It's two lines. <laughs> the last one was just about as long. Okay. All right. We we know how, which means we know how to act to transform the mysterious and ever-threatening world of the present into what we desire long before we know how we know how or why we know how. <laughs> <laughs> so we can probably just move on that's pretty easy <laughs> just kidding that one's tough okay. <laughs> oh man I so, I felt like I had it right up until he said we know how how we know and oh, yeah, that, that's know. the how and how, how how exactly yeah it's a fun I like that one because uh, it's really cool once you understand it oh yeah so according to him knowing how is knowing how to act to transform the world into what we desire. Okay. So when he says the mysterious and ever-threatening world of the present into what we desire, is his full concept of that. Okay. So it's turning the unknown into the known. Right. Easy. Um, so we know how to do that long before we know how we know how we do that, which sounds <laughs> dumb. But on before. to try and say it in a different yeah, way, how... <laughs> okay. I mean, it's pretty much what we're talking about, uh, how, about how it's like all implicit. We do it innately. Yeah. Yeah. So like we know Just how to change that. things. <laughs> yeah. We know how to change things before we know how we know how to change things. Right. Yeah. We, we do things innately before we're aware that we're doing it. Before we know why we're doing it. Okay. And that's what he continues with is or why we know how. Because you can say, man, why am I acting that way? And it's but you are. Because you implicitly understand something. Yeah. Uh, that you don't understand, like, consciously. It's just, it's, I mean, it's like a enjoyable game of semantics, almost. Yeah. Because he's he's really picking apart just everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. And, like, some of these quotes are definitely bigger that we can really discuss. Yeah. And some of them are, it's just like, yeah, no, it's just, it's adding but it's right. Well, and I like I actually do like that because I think it's something that a really good teacher can do mm -hmm. is hit the same concept multiple times, yeah, in different ways, yeah, to either help the people that didn't understand it the first time, or to go back and enhance the understanding of the same thing. Yeah, it's like if you had a mountain, like if the understanding is the mountain, mm -hmm. instead of just having a picture of one side of it, you're getting a 3D view of the whole thing. Yeah. Well, I mean. Ah oh, man, yeah. Your I think your teacher analogy rings true with me so much because like my favorite teachers were able to explain it five ways to Sunday, right. so everybody was on the same page. Actually, one of my favorite teachers was like every time they taught like a major concept, and mm -hmm. they didn't do this on the minor ones just because you know. But on a major concept, they'd explain it one way, and then they'd say, "Who doesn't understand and wants a different explanation?" Mm -hmm. So you know. I, it, it, it was a great teacher. So about, like, let's say 40% of the class's hands went up. All right, so then he explains it another way. So even if you understood it, you could try to learn it a different way that might click with you even better or just further your understanding of it. And he would do that usually two or three times. But so he's done four or five times, and I was blown away that he had five different ways to explain one simple concept. Yeah, and if you want to talk about being a master, that's how. The, exactly. That's exactly yeah. how... That's exactly my point of like, I think that's what makes you a master mm -hmm. is like that incredibly high level of understanding to such an extent that mm -hmm. you can explain it to the like the lowest level feasible. Yeah.